The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to configure the iSCSI target. Uh, so I've created another Solera and I've gone through all the process to make it unique and configure interfaces. Um, and let's create an iSCSI target and an iSCSI LUN that we're going to use to replicate to in this example. So here we'll start the uh, wizard since this is an effect, uh, you know, kind of a naked new Solera. I haven't configured an iSCSI target or LUN. Opening up the wizard, we answer the few simple questions to get this configured. Specifically, uh, uh, creating a target name. So we'll call this one uh, CSDR target number one. Um, as an interesting note, you can have many, many Solera uh, iSCSI targets on a single Solera, uh, up to a thousand. Uh, so it can be used very flexibly with different LUNs behind targets. And then you specify what IP addresses and what interfaces that iSCSI target will be presented to the outside world. In other words, the iSCSI portals. This step is now complete, and let's go on to the next step, uh, which normally you create an iSCSI LUN, but I'm going to take a quick little detour. If you go to network, one thing that's very useful is to make sure that they can actually ping each other. So navigating to the network dialog and selecting ping, by the way, once again, you can actually right click on the tree on the left and achieve the same output. Um, there's a utility that allows you to ping, ping from a specific data mover and also a specific data mover interface and ping from that to any particular uh, IP address that you'd like. So what we're going to do here just to make sure that there's actual IP connectivity between my source and destination Solera is here I'm pinging from the IP uh, interface on one data mover to another that I'm going to use in a later step uh, to actually replicate between the two Soleras. If this doesn't succeed, you're going to have problems later on, so it's a good thing to make sure that you're good to go and you've got IP connectivity. Let's get back to configuring that iSCSI LUN. Now, for an iSCSI LUN to be a replication target, it needs to be the same size as the source and it needs to be configured as read-only, both simple to do in the wizard. Now, this is the same steps that we've covered in the Solera 101, um, so it's a good idea to go and look at that as a refresher. In fact, um, this is a brand new Solera that I've deployed from a template and I had to follow all the steps in that process anyway. So here what we're going to do is we're going to use the wizard, select the data mover, pick uh, which target we're going to use and which portal it's going to be exposed on, and then uh, select a file system, and if there's no file systems, create one. Again, this is a brand new Solera, so I need to create the file system. And just like we covered in the 101 module, it's a simple, easy process where you can identify uh, which storage pools. Again, a Solera can have multiple tiers of different types of storage, um, both by RAID type and drive type. Um, which allows you to tier your quality of service. And then you actually create the iSCSI file system itself. Now one thing that's important here is that the sizing of the file system when you're going to be using it as a replication target is, has one little piece of information you need to know. It requires, in effect, a reservation. The reason for that is that replication involves snapshotting on the remote side, so there's deltas that are being tracked. How big? Minimally around 20%, worst case around 150%. The good news is, is that uh, EMC's design will always fail the snap and, or the replica, not the production system, if you run out of space. Two, you can always dynamically just add more. And third, the system will actually tell you when it's running out of space. So you don't need to dramatically oversize it. You can also actually thin provision it as well. So now that we've created that file system, great. Now we create the LUN. This is where you select that it's read-only. And here's where you specify the size. Again, it needs to be the same size as the source LUN often get the question, how do you make it read writable on the remote side? And the answer is, during a failover, it automatically gets promoted, and Site Recovery Manager also automates that task. If you just want to play around with the target, you can also create a writable snapshot on the remote side. Now, here's where you uh, expose that to a host. And by the way, it needs to be exposed to the ESX cluster if you want to have Site Recovery Manager be able to uh, recognize the remote replica target. And here the wizard is just completing. Since this is a brand new Solera, you'll notice the iSCSI service isn't started, so I need to start the iSCSI service. And um, after this, we are in essence done. We now have got a replication target, and it's ready to use with Solera Replicator and ultimately with VMware Site Recovery Manager as soon as we expose it to an ESX cluster.